Years ago, I remember reading a book called The Orthodox Corruption of Scripture by the popular New York Times bestseller author Bart Ehrman, who was himself a one-time fundamental Christian, but now a self-professed agnostic. And in that book, he notes a lot of corruptions by Orthodox Christianity, that is the Catholic Protestant tradition that maintains the Trinity and the literal preexistence of Jesus, etc. But I'm going to show you here that there's also a Jewish corruption of Scripture that takes place regarding the begetting of the Son of God. Now, I call this CSI, which stands for Crime Scene Investigation, because that's what this is, a crime scene. So the crime scene occurs in the Old Testament. Now, you might be surprised to know that only two verses reference the begetting of the Messiah. Now, there's the popular Psalm 2-7, Today I have begotten you, which is used a couple of times in the New Testament, at least, in reference to Jesus. So there are the references there, actually more than a couple. And then you have the famous Psalm 110, verse 3. And according to the LXX, which is the old Greek translation, also known as the Septuagint, I'll show you a different reading than the Hebrew so-called Masoretic text that takes place. And the New Testament never uses this verse, and there's a perfectly good reason for it. Now, the Hebrew Masoretic text of 110 verse 3 reads, Your people willingly follow you when you go into battle. On the holy hills at sunrise, the dew of your youth belongs to you. So that's the New English translation. New International reads, Your troops will be willing on your day of battle, arrayed in holy splendor. Your young men will come to you like dew from the morning's womb. And then the New American Bible, revised. Yours is princely power from the day of your birth in holy splendor before the day star, like do I begot you. So as you can see, uh, these translations don't make any sense, really. Only two of them capture the, the point that I'm trying to make here about the corruption regarding the begetting, and that's the NIV about the womb, but the, warm, the morning's womb has zero meaning. And begetting like to do as well, it's very unclear. So the Greek translation of the Old Testament called the LXX, which took place about three or 200 years before Christ, has a totally different reading that many scholars think is the original. So here's one way of interpreting the Greek, with you is dominion in the day of your power, in the splendors of your saints, from the womb before the dawn, I have begotten you. And here's another reading, with you will the dominion rest on the day of your power, in the radiance or brightness of the saints, from the womb, I have begotten you before the morning star. So as you can see, this verse clearly speaks of the begetting of someone. And if you read the Psalm 110 in context, it's a vision, a prophecy by David, where he sees uh, someone he calls my Lord sitting at the right hand of Yahweh or Jehovah, God. And that my Lord is uh, traditionally believed to be a prophecy about the Messiah. So. The Hebrew corruption is noted by many notable uh, evangelical scholars and books. And here's one of them, Theolog the Theological Dictionary of the Old Testament. The text of Psalm 110.3 is undoubtedly corrupt. Also, the popular 
theological dictionary of the New Testament on the word yenao, which means begotten or to beget. Yenan, so that's to bring forth or to cause to come into existence, yenan, is used very rarely of God in the Old Testament, but it occurs in significant passages. Thus the king addressed in Psalm 2 is begotten of God, as also the king in 109, that's the numbering system of the Greek translation, it's the Psalms are one off. And then it says, probably the original, but owing to corruption of the Hebrew text, not perhaps unintentional, these words had no influence in Judaism. And then, hey, uh, glory at the right hand book, Mo Winkle, a, a famous scholar, and many other think that the old, old Greek, the OG, is close to the sense of the original Hebrew text. If so, the corruption of the present Hebrew text may have resulted from deliberate efforts by scribes to conceal the meaning. So the question of obviously is why? Why are the Jews corrupting their own texts? The theological dictionary, again, on the word birth. In Palestinian Judaism, the thought of God begetting occurs only in connection with messianic expectation. It's remarkable that in all the voluminous rabbinical literature, there's only one reference which applies Psalm 27 to the Messiah. This silence is apparently due to the rabbi's opposition to the Christian church, which had applied Psalm 2 to Jesus' sonship. And again, on the commentary on the New Testament, use of the Old Testament. The Greek, the Old Greek, the LXX of Psalm 110 distinctively describes the birth of a divine child. The earliest rabbinic reference in the name of Rabbi Ishmael around 100 AD applies the Psalm to Abraham. However, Ishmael was an anti-Christian zealot who probably introduced this distinctive interpretation to counter the, the Christian use of the text. 